Hello friends, welcome to the learning platform Aviation Life. Let's start our video with a good quotation. Learn continually. There is always one more thing to learn. In today's video, we will discuss altimeter setting procedures and what is the understanding of QNH, QNE and QFE. Altimetry or altimeter setting procedure involves set of definitions and procedures used to ensure adequate vertical separation from terrain and other aircraft depending upon different altimeter setting. Before we go into detail, let's revise some basic definitions and concepts which we have already discussed in previous videos. Altitude Vertical distance between mean sea level and a point in air. If we measure vertical distance between aircraft and ground, it is called height. Concept of flight level also corresponds to certain vertical distance. Barometric reference is the pressure setting at which altimeter will indicate 0 feet and then it measures the vertical distance in relation to this reference level. Pilot can adjust the barometric reference to any level with the help of adjusting knob. Let's suppose the pressure at mean sea level is 29.70 inches of mercury and if pilot feed this pressure setting as a barometric reference, it will give the altitude of an aircraft. On the other hand, let's suppose there is an airport which is at certain elevation above mean sea level is having a pressure reading of 28.70 inches of mercury. In this case, it is QFE, which is a pressure level that identifies the airport level. If a pilot feeds this value as a barometric reference, it will give him the height above the ground. There is another setting known as QNE, which is taken as a standard setting against the pressure reading of 29.92 inches of mercury or 1013 millibar. In this particular example, this level is below mean sea level. If the pilot adjusts the QNE as a barometric reference, it will indicate the flight level. Now summarizing all this, there are three main barometric reference to be used in altimeter setting procedures. First is the QNH. It's a pressure level that identifies the mean sea level. Therefore, the altimeter will indicate altitudes. Then there is QFE. It is a pressure level that identifies the certain aerodrome level. Therefore, the altimeter will indicate height. Finally, there is QNE that identifies standard pressure level of 29.92 inches of mercury or 1013 millibar. Therefore, the altimeter will indicate flight levels. Let's understand the flight level in more detail. Flight level is a vertical distance between standard isobar and a point in air. Something important to mention is that Flight level are identified by acronym FL followed by three digits representing hundreds of feet. Let's take an example. If an aircraft has set QNE as a reference and altimeter is showing 6500 feet, then in this case it will be represented as flight level 065. In this order, if the air altimeter is reading 10,000 feet, it will be represented as flight level 100. Under the ISO conditions, at mean sea level, QNH and QNE are same. Therefore, the altitude and flight level will be same. Using this setting, the altimeter on ground will indicate the elevation of that particular airport. Let's say under standard conditions, the barometric pressure on that airfield is 27.92 inches of mercury and if pilot sets that value as a barometric reference, altimeter will indicate height above the ground. What will happen in low pressure conditions? It means the barometric pressure on mean sea level is lower than 29.92. Let's suppose the pressure at mean sea level is 29.50 inches of mercury and if a pilot feeds 29.5 as a barometric reference then it will give altitude in air and elevation of that airfield on ground. As the isobar of 29.92 inches of mercury will be lower than mean sea level in this condition so flight level will be higher than altitude. What will happen if the pressure conditions are high? It means the barometric pressure on mean sea level will be higher than 
Let's suppose the pressure at mean sea level is 30.10 inches of mercury. If a pilot feeds 30.10 as a barometric reference, then it will give altitude in air and elevation of that airfield on ground. As the isobar of 29.92 inches of mercury will be higher than mean sea level in this condition, so flight level will be lower than the altitude as we can see. To ensure vertical separation between two aircraft, it is important that both should be using same barometric reference, either QNH or QNE. Let's suppose an aircraft which is higher is maintaining 8000 feet on QNE and the lower one is maintaining 7000 feet on altimeter at QNH and if the outside pressure conditions are high then the aircraft using QNH will be flying higher than 7000 feet although the altimeter will be reading 7000 feet and separation will be less than 1000 feet which can be a collision hazard. If you are flying at low altitude, then you can encounter either terrain or nearby aircraft. Therefore, it is important to maintain local QNH settings as a barometric reference by all aircrafts. It will ensure vertical separation among the aircraft and terrain as well. If you are flying at high altitude, then you just need to ensure vertical separation from nearby aircraft. So to keep it as a standard worldwide, all aircraft maintains Q and E as a barometric reference to ensure vertical separation. But what to do when you are transitioning from low altitude to high level? Transition altitude is the altitude below which all aircraft must use local Q and H and therefore must express vertical position in terms of altitude. Transition level is the level above which all aircraft must use standard Q and E and therefore must express vertical position in terms of flight levels. Finally, we have a concept of transition layer which is the airspace between transition altitude and transition level. It is important to note that aircraft are not allowed to fly level in transition layer. Climbing aircraft will change from Q and H to Q and E while crossing transition altitude. Whereas Descending aircraft will change from Q and E to Q and H while crossing transition level. It is very important to keep updating local Q and H time to time. Let's suppose an aircraft moving from point A to point B. Both destinations are having different Q and H value. If that aircraft does not update its Q and H from 30.05 to 29.60, it will keep on losing altitude which can be too dangerous. So remember a thumb rule, high to low, look out below. I hope after watching this video, your understanding regarding basic altimeter settings and their practical applications has improved. If you like our efforts, don't forget to subscribe and share. Keep on learning. Thank you.